This is Michael, and welcome to another video from Sapper Woodworking. In today's video, we're going to venture back into the realm of segmented wood turning, and I'll demonstrate some of the steps in making an 11 layer segmented vase. The vase turned out to be about 9 inches tall, and, or 23 centimeters, and about 7 inches wide, or 18 centimeters at its widest point. I'll discuss a little bit about the simplified design method I use and a new style that I tried uh, to actually glue the rings up individually on the lathe itself and how I broke up the actual uh, turning and construction into two separate parts. Now pictured here is the limit of my plans for this base. You can certainly go out and buy software programs where you could sketch out exactly how you want the vase to look like, pick the number of layers you want, pick how many segments you want in each ring, and the software will calculate a complete cut list and everything you need to do. I just uh, like to keep it simple. If you've seen any of my other segmented wood turnings, I usually just kind of wing it. In this case, I've just sketched out the rough shape of what I want the vase to look like. I decided how many layers I thought I needed. In this case, it was 11. And then I just kind of eyeballed that second set of numbers to the right from seven and a half inches, seven inches, six and a half inches on how wide I thought uh, each piece, each segment of ring should be. And then I consulted a chart for the numbers second to the left that started out at 1.6, 1.35, 1.47. And those represent in inches of distance I needed each segment to be to equal the uh, circumference and diameter that I needed for each particular layer. And then the set of numbers to the far left is just the, the metric conversion of that. So to explain it uh, another way, if you look at the layers four and five, those rings I intended to be about seven and a half inches in diameter. So by consulting the chart using a 12 segmented ring chart uh, and the metric conversion, which was 51 millimeters, each section, each segment of that ring would need to be cut 51 millimeters long at the proper angle on my jig. And that would result in a ring of about seven and a half inches. So now I moved over to the table saw where I will be using my homemade shop jig to cut the individual segments. Each ring has 12 segments, two of which will be black walnut and 10 will be hard maple. Now this vase is going to have about 132 individual segments that get cut. Now I don't want to get those all mixed up. So I use these plastic trays to kind of sort them into individual rings. And a quick shout out and thank you to Angela for upcycling these uh, out of the medical waste stream so that I can use them for my projects. So I'm on to cutting my second ring and I'm here I'm just kind of tapping over the fence just a couple of millimeters. And it's always amazing to me how you just make a slight change in the length of your cut, two or three millimeters, and it makes a significant difference in the circumference of your ring. All right, well, we'll run this next section of the video at about 300% speed, and then the last section of all the segmented cutting will be a time lapse to get us through maybe, you know, 20 minutes with the work in just a few minutes.
And voila, we're back over at the workbench. We've got all of our segments cut. They're all sorted to keep them all individually together. And then we'll head over to my little jig I made to glue up the individual rings. It's nothing fancy. It's just a, a board. I think it's a piece of melamine shelving that the glue doesn't stick to very well. And I just got the perimeter set up with some nails and I'll just line up all of the little individual segments, glue as much as I can per side, and I'll use those nails to kind of hold the rubber band in place. I can stretch it around each, each individual ring, and that method has worked really, really well. It's simple, easy, and inexpensive. Here we have all of our rings glued up. They're rubber banded, most of them double rubber banded. And that's all you need to do. We'll let these sit overnight for the glue to set. And then we'll head over to the drum sander to flatten each piece. I believe I'm using uh, 80 grit sandpaper in this case. And that'll uh, flatten these rings really quickly as well as give a nice uh, rough surface for the gluing of each individual ring. After about five, 10 minutes over at the drum sander, all of my rings are flat, they're ready to glue up. And here I'm just gonna kinda lay them out and see how the shape turned out as compared to my rough sketch. To the left is a turning of a pine log that I worked on, oh, maybe about a year ago. That's slowly been drying. And I just kinda use that as a guide for my original sketch. And I'm just gonna layer up the rings and see how close I came to my, to my drawing. Well, this seems like a good time in the video to ask you if you'd consider subscribing to my channel. It really helps us within the YouTube community when folks subscribe and get our content out to more individuals. Much appreciated if you'd show some love and hit that subscribe button. Also consider hitting the bell button and you'll be notified when we post up future videos. Much appreciated and thanks again. Now for this vase, I'm going to try to glue it up on the lathe itself. I've done that in past bowls but they've only had like one or two layers and I've pretty much just eyeballed the, the layer where it needs to be but in this case with 11 layers I really needed to be more accurate with the placement of each individual ring so I ended up turning that plywood disc that you see and cut out some holes and put some grippers uh, that I could crank down and have the bowl centered exactly on those concentric rings that I just drew on the, the piece of plywood while it was spinning on the lathe. And this method works really well. I get those layers almost exactly centered from one ring to the next, but it does take some time. I would end up gluing on a layer using the headstock against the tailstock as sort of its own clamp. Let that glue set for about 15 minutes and then repeat the process going on to the next layer. Like I said, it worked really well. Each individual layer was centered. It just took quite a bit of time.
I mentioned earlier that I did the actual construction and turning in two separate steps. And what I meant by that is considering this vase had a pretty wide bottom and narrow top, it would be possible but pretty difficult to get inside that deep with a hollowing tool. So it just made more sense to kind of treat this as two separate projects. I ended up going up, I think, the first six layers and then kind of turn those layers into the shape I was after, inside and out. Finished sanding through, I think, 150 grit, almost to the point where I could finish that as its bowl itself. And then I stopped and glued on the remaining layers. So then when the entire uh, segmented base was glued up together, I only had to really worry about finishing work on just the top several layers, rather than have to go deep inside with a hollowing tool. So at this point, I've got the bottom part of my vase completely or almost finished turned. It's sanded down to 150 grit, and I'm just now starting to glue up the top layers. And I'm back to using my little homemade ring that I made. And you now can see the bottom of that ring. I just had a washer glued right in the center, and I can put that against my live center on the tailstock, use the headstock against the tailstock as a vise and that centered each ring perfectly where it needed to be. Of course, I uh, unintended consequences. I ran into a little problem. As these rings got smaller, my jig wouldn't, uh, wouldn't center those rings. I didn't make my grooves in that little jig far enough to the middle, so I ended up actually having to glue the last several layers by eyeballing them. That does work, but once I finish this, you'll see the project spin a little bit. Those last few layers weren't exactly centered but my layer uh, thickness from outside the ring to the inside the ring were, was about an inch and a quarter, so I had plenty of material to work with, so I wasn't too worried that if it was off-center just a bit. So the glue has had a chance to dry overnight and you can see of the right roughed rings that are glued up, the first two using my jig are very well centered and the right four that I was eyeballing are wobbling just a bit. But again, I have enough material to make sure these turn out round and I'm not too worried about that. So at this point in the construction, I'm using my half inch bull gouge to just fine tune how I want the outside of the vase to look like. Uh, in the past oh, year or two, I've started uh, grinding my gouges to a 40-40 grind. Uh, I would just do a quick search on YouTube. There's many videos out there on how to convert your, your tools over to that grind. And I really like those angles. It just seems to work really well, especially on segmented projects. And now I've moved on uh, to the center uh, inside of the vase. And as we saw earlier, I had already pre-finished the bottom six layers or so, and those are ready to go. And I really only had to worry about fine tuning and smoothing out the top five layers or so. So it uh, made the process much easier and I didn't have to worry about getting a hollowing tool too deep into the vase. Now we all know that producing YouTube videos of wood turning, it's always required to show at least 10 seconds of 
you send in your project. So I checked that off my list here. And now that I've uh, finished my final sanding up to 320 grit, I actually sprayed on a couple layers of uh, lacquer out of the can that I unfortunately don't have any video of. But once that dried a couple hours, I'm just taking a, I think a four aught steel wool and just smoothing out that surface inside and out to prepare the vase for a final buffing. Okay, so other than the final step of buffing out the lacquer uh, surface with some wax, um, I just need to get it removed from the chuck. So I'm just taking my parting tool here and very slowly whittling down that surface until I feel the, the vase kind of rock a little bit uh, with my right hand. And when it's rocking enough, I can now take my saw and trim off that last little section to you know, prevent the face from flying off the lathe, which unfortunately happened to me once a couple years ago and I destroyed a project. So now I'm a little bit more careful at the end. So here I'm just uh, cutting through that final segment and boom, the vase is almost ready to be released. Ah, perfect. Now I'm really happy how this vase turned out. I like the uh, alternating pattern of the maple and black walnut and now I'm just moving on to the last step which is to take uh, my buffing wheel and I'll uh, buff this out with a white rubbing compound and then move on to a little carnauba wax and that really shines up the surface and then it'll be uh, ready to stick on a shelf and display permanently so there you have it so hey if you liked uh, again if you like what you see in the video please consider subscribing to the channel it would be much appreciated and hit that uh, hit that bell button to be notified when we post up future videos. And if you have any questions or comments on the video, be sure to leave those in the comment section below. And otherwise, have a great day. Thanks for watching.